there are nervous about going to the table yourself, go to the table and mark them. Step two, seek out their input. Now, if it's something you're not sure that they would be comfortable providing that, you know, talk to your team members in advance. By all means, you guys can kind of stage this as well. But in the middle of a meeting, ask them for their thoughts. Ask them for their perspective. Actively engage them in conversation during the meeting. Don't let them sit quietly to the side. The folks who have not had as much marginalization are usually very confident in giving their opinions and perspectives. Go get everybody else and bring them into the discussion. Get their value. Get their value added to the discussion. And once you have, step three, validate what they just said. Even if you don't fully agree, hey, that was a really interesting perspective that you just brought. I'm going to have to think about that a little bit more. Oh, wow, I really love what you just said. What do you think about this piece? Validate what they're bringing, what their contributions are. In doing that, you will not only encourage them to speak up more often, but you will help counter microaggressions in your workplace. You will help counter feelings of, of belonging or lack of belonging. You will improve feelings of belonging. Um, and these are all things that everybody says, oh, you have to be able to hit these things in order to truly have inclusion. Nobody ever defines for you how to do it. Three simple steps you need to do. Bring them to the table. There's a dual purpose to that. The first and most important piece of it is fostering that belonging, countering those microaggressions, making your team members feel welcome and heard and valued as an individual. Right? Companies want to have diverse workforces. They'll set metrics and statistics about how many women to hire or how many minorities to hire, but how do you retain? Companies lose millions of dollars every year in training new employees because they can't retain the talent they have because their people don't feel valued. When you grow and foster these feelings of belonging, you're going to prevent that. You're going to retain the best of the brightest of those, and you're going to help them feel very valued. The second piece, and it's more of the subconscious piece, is you model now behavior to promote this kind of environment to everybody on your team at a subconscious level. Now, everyone on your team is going to do the same things. So if you asked Sam for his opinion at the meeting today, Julie might ask Sam for his opinion at the meeting tomorrow. Modeling is one of the fastest ways that we learn you know, visually, even if you're, even if you're a, a good book learner, having a visual reference for everything that you do is really what can help solidify um, that training and that education for folks. So you will see other people start to mimic those same behaviors. And plus, because you validated that opinion, now everybody knows, oh, well, you know, now she's really smart, and if she thinks Sam's really smart, I need to go ask Sam about his perspective on this. Right? And so you're growing, you're growing that inclusive environment, you're growing and fostering that team spirit, and really just building those teams and keeping them cohesive and together. When everyone grows and learns together, that's when you can really develop a truly inclusive environment. You retain your best and brightest talent, and you benefit from a much greater. digitalmedia.com